Welcome to ISAF Monitor. I'm sitting here with Carlos Robles, uh, the president of Belta. Carlos is an expert for the Brazilian market and you just released a, a study in 2011 about uh, future trends in, in Brazil. What were the outcomes? What were the results of this study? Well, we, did, we wanted to know the results and a lot of uh, things of, about the Brazilian market in international education. Yeah. And ISAF was one of the sponsoring organizations for that, and we thank you very much. Um, we found out that uh, out of our, um, all of the uh, agencies that responded, language courses was the f number one um, product or international service in terms of uh, international education. So lots of uh, agents uh, have uh, language courses as the number one source of, of uh, selling point. And then comes after the second one is a high school program. And then the third, uh, we have combined other types of uh, ed international education uh, programs such as uh, work abroad or work and study, uh, au pair, and, and some other courses related to uh, cultural or language plus programs. Um, Brazil is a huge market, it has always been a huge uh, outbound market. What can an educator do to, to find the right agency um, when he wants to, when he's new in Brazil, when he wants to work with uh, Brazilian agents? Well, I think uh, there are lots of sources in terms of uh, finding out the uh, quality of the agents, and one of them is Belta. Belta agencies uh, are responsible for 90% of the international education market. So Belta is a good source of, uh, of information for an educator that, who would like to start in Brazil. I believe also they have to take cautions of asking, you know, embassies and also other institutions in in and associations and in in their home countries as well to make sure that uh, the agency is very reliable and everything. But we are also uh, Belt is always uh, keen on giving information and and helping you know a new educators to to start in Brazil. Traditionally. Um when you talk about Brazil, a lot of educators think about Rio, of course, Sao Paulo, but Brazil is such a huge country with so many cities. Um, how can I tap into these other cities, which are not the, ma the main cities everybody, everybody is talking about? Well, I think, uh, you know, through uh, some agencies, they, they have their head offices in Sao Paulo or Rio or any other major city. But there are lots of agencies, there are local agencies in the northeast, in the center of Brazil. It's a question of uh, trying to find out uh, who they are and, and the importance of the market. Of course, uh, in terms of uh, numbers, if you go Sao Paulo and south and southeast region of Brazil, concentrates more than, I would say, 70% of the business in international education. But there's always a, uh, an, another eye to some other parts of, of Brazil. And again, I think uh, Belta is a, is a good source for, for information uh, in terms of uh, trying to find out new destination, new markets. And I would encourage uh, the language schools or the educators who would like to do uh, business with, with agents to try to find out and diversify um, the, the market by looking at smaller and, and medium-sized cities in Brazil away from the south, southeast air region. We talked about the academic programs um, Brazilian students are mostly interested in, but let's now look at the destinations. Uh, what countries are attractive for Brazilian students, or where do they go to ma mainly? Um, the research revealed that the number one destination in terms of country is Canada. Well, Canada is investing a lot of, uh, in terms of advertising the country, and, uh, and, and it's been working. Uh, U.S. is still the second destination, followed by U.K., followed by Australia and New Zealand. So basically those are. In terms of uh, French language, uh, France is still the first destination, and Spanish. Um, Spain has shown to be the first country, although we have uh, seen that a lot of uh, students are looking for a closer market in terms of Spanish in Latin America. So Chile and Argentina are countries that are starting to receive a lot of students who would like to uh, learn Spanish. 
I have the feeling that uh, the key to success in, um, in South America are personal contacts and uh, I have also the feeling that it needs some time to establish these contacts. Um, can you give me some hi um, hints and tricks like how, how can I do that or maybe what mistakes can I, can I avoid when, when I want to do business in, uh, in Brazil? I think uh, we're Latin people, and we we like very much um, uh, lots of uh, you know personal relationship um, to the point where, for example, Brazilians would if they go to a, a line at the bank in 15 minutes, they know everything about the life of the neighbor. Um, I mean, this is just to illustrate uh, the fact that uh, we are very open. We are very. Uh, person and we value that so I think uh, the approach would be to to be very transparent to be very um, kind of open and to establish a personal relationship that will count a lot and that that is our, our character so um, we, we, we like people that that you know are very close to us uh, let's take a look into the future. We, we put the spotlight on the, on the status quo, on the current situation. Uh, where do you think is Brazil going to be in, in five years? Are there going to be any policy changes, any changes in visa, um, maybe new, new trends which, which aren't uh, on the screen right now? Yeah, What do you think the future is going to be like for Brazil and international education? Um, it all depends on, on the economy, on the way that uh, especially the currency goes. Uh, for example, uh, again, the research showed that uh, what we call Class C, we're thinking about a, a class that normally couldn't afford to go abroad for education. Um, they are value, valuing that very much because they need that for their, their jobs to advance a career and they, and they normally were talking about English as a, as a first foreign language that they, they, they are searching. So the class B, uh, because of the credit facilities and because of the, the currency being very stabilized, um, they jumped a lot in terms of research. Um, I think that the curve will remain kind of uh, very stable and up, um, but a little bit different because uh, our exchange rate just went up from 160, 170 to 210, and that brings a little concern of how much would I have to have to, to pay for the same course. So in other words, uh, depending on the foreign, uh, uh, foreign uh, policy, the currency, and the, the, state, the global state, status I think uh, it's it's universal it's everywhere but I, I do believe that a Brazil Brazilian economy uh, will still be growing um, maybe not as fast as as we want to or, or as you know was supposed to be but I believe that this international education is a, a stable market with a, a kind of a constant curve up and uh, it's you know, we need that. I mean, everybody needs to, to have international education, um, leave abroad, have an international uh, experience to advance in their career and to get better jobs and be better prepared for the world. Thank you, Carlos. It was an honor to have you and thank you for this uh, excellent insights on, on the Brazilian market, on international education and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.